Hey guys, my name is Brandon, and today I'll be showing you what the thermodynamic limit is. So the thermodynamic limit of a measurable quantity is the value that represents how that particular aspect of the system behaves. This is often encountered when we measure macroscopic quantities, such as the pressure, temperature, and volume of a gas. For example, let's say I have a jar that is halfway filled with sand and someone asks me to calculate the jar's density. Well, density is mass divided by volume. So if I took the weight of the jar to find its mass and divided it by its volume, I would have its density. Now this density is not constant through the jar. As I said, the jar is halfway filled with sand. So the density I calculated would be too low for the area where the sand is and too high for the pocket of air above the sand. However, if I don't care how the sand is distributed within the jar, in other words, I don't care about the microscopic state of the system, and I treat the jar of sand as one lumped object, then using that density would be fine if I wanted to know if it sinks if I toss it into a lake. The thermodynamic limit functions similar to how we calculated the density in this example. It roughly describes a particular property of the system. Let's look at another example. Suppose I have a wall of area A, exposed to a gas of constant density, and I use this wall to measure the pressure of the gas. Well, pressure is force divided by area. So every time a molecule collides with our wall, we will feel a force. We divide this force by the area of the wall to calculate its pressure. If we plotted the pressure as a function of time, it would look something like the graph shown here. Because our target is so small, the fluctuations in pressure are huge, and it is difficult to tell what the pressure of the system really is. Well, suppose now we increase the area of our target. Because the area of our target has increased, more gas molecules collide with it, resulting in a greater force acting on the target. However, because both the area and the force have increased, the pressure stays roughly approaching the same value. Um, this is also assisted by the fact that we assumed the density of the gas is constant. Because the collisions are more frequent, the fluctuations in the pressure become more dense, and the data points that signify a non-zero pressure appear to settle around a certain value. Now, if we again increase the size of our target, it becomes overwhelmingly obvious that the pressure is settling around some value. So we say in the thermodynamic limit, the pressure of the gas is equal to that value. You have to be careful though, because this isn't the average value. The large deviations from the limit could create an average value that is very far from the thermodynamic limit. It is more of a value that best represents a particular behavioral aspect of the system. This leads us to distinguishing what these two measurable quantities are. There are two types, intensive and extensive variables. Intensive variables are independent of the system size, meaning if you doubled the size of your system, it would have no effect on this quantity. An example is temperature and pressure. These have nothing to do with how much of that substance you have. If you have a balloon and grabbed another balloon, it doesn't mean that you have twice the temperature and twice the pressure. In contrast, extensive variables do scale with the system size. An obvious one is volume. If you go from having one to two balloons, then you have twice the volume of gas than you originally had, assuming the balloons are identical. Another not so obvious extensive variable is internal energy. There's energy inside a cup of water that keeps it a liquid. If the internal energy is low enough, it turns into ice. And if you go from having one to two cups of water, then you have doubled the internal energy of your system because twice the internal energy is needed to keep twice the amount of water in liquid form. So today we learned about the thermodynamic limit and extensive and intensive variables. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe.